It's showtime. Hello and welcome back to Musical Lyrical Lingo. We're your hosts, Tim and LJ. Today and every week, we will be talking musicals and specifically what they taught us. Timothy, I have a surprise for you. Oh, okay. Okay, so a few episodes back, you claimed that you had never tried Ovaltine. Well, yeah, I've never tried Ovaltine. Well, if you want to take a wee look to your right, your left... Oh, 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 she's got a mug of Ovaltine. I made yourself. <laughs> now, I'm a wee bit worried about the amount of steam that's coming yeah, off it. So she's going to burn the bake off me. So um, maybe give it a few big blows. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it, oh, it smells ming. No, it smells lovely. No, it really smells. It looks like hot chocolate, though. I told you it was like those chocolatey those, things. Yes. Oh, I don't. Right, okay. Oh. Here we go. Oh. We're straight into it in this episode, aren't I know, we? I know. Your, you and your surprises. The surprise from the last episode was enough, even though I didn't oh, get a here, mention in I it. I feel like I should be recording this. What do you mean? Oh, with me doing it. You actually right, okay. taking Two a seconds. Drink. She's just getting her phone all set up. Right, hold on. And my phone if I'd is known, I'd have made myself look more presentable. Right, oh come God. on, the listeners are dying to see. Okay. Are we ready? Make sure it doesn't uh, burn your mouth. Right, here we go, folks. Well. Oh, it actually does <gasps> taste like those those sweets. I told you you would like it. Mmm. Here, that's better than hot chocolate. There we have Happy it. Happy days. So I now have a little, um, a little, what's this called? Beverage, hot yes. beverage to and get me through this episode. Meant to help you sleep. So... <laughs> halfway through this episode if you only hear me yeah you know what's happened <laughs> Timothy has nodded off <laughs> to be quite honest with you I am absolutely exhausted I kind of feel like one of those hamsters on their wheels at the moment where it just keeps going round and round and round and round and at some point I'm just gonna be teddy bread oh dear please stop drinking that oval thing so that you don't it's really delicious. Oh, fantastic. Well, look what is going to be a staple in your home. <laughs> Ovaltine, where have you been all my life? <laughs> Very good. Okay, right. So, that is actually really good. Well, there we go. Who would have thought? Who would have thought that you would have liked Ovaltine? It's oh, amazing what this podcast is teaching you. All the things that was going to come out of this podcast, that is not what I thought I would walk away having gained from it <laughs> but okay great <laughs> <laughs> oh i love do you it. think they have ovaltine in the likes of australia and philippines and all these other places where we have listeners oh yes did you i love that little drop, drop in, in there not africa though so if we know any african um friends and family could you give them a shout out and tell them to listen to our podcast and then we've got world domination lj yeah, world domination it is so exciting but it's our fans that are listening, and this episode is all about our fans. Yes, it's all about you guys. Oh. And you haven't disappointed, to be fair. No, not at all. I was thinking, surely there isn't stories to top our embarrassing stories, but there really is, yeah. isn't there? Yeah, and do you know what? There's some stories that we have got in, lovely little uh, voice notes and lovely little stories, which actually are even too good for this podcast. We're going to have to do another podcast maybe have these guys on as guests oh you mean guests yeah. oh we're talking guests my oh here you we must be pl planning long term are we i think so i think that's <laughs> right, it you're okay. stuck with us now guys yes no genuinely thank you for still listening and thank you for getting in contact uh with your funny stories so yeah this episode today is all about them and their funny mishaps and silly stories 
to top ours. Yeah. Yeah. Shall we brilliant. get going? Yeah, well, we start right back at the beginning, episode one, when we were talking about our Go, 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 Joe yeah, episode. I think so. Let's, yeah. Let's go. So we've got a few around that, don't we? Yeah, I think, because quite a few people were in the same situation as yes. us. They they were involved in the touring production mm-hmm. numerous, numerous times, and they certainly have outdone my... Titanic, you could fit the Titanic through those legs story. So, what have you got for us, Lauren? So, apparently, one of the times whenever we were doing it and we were clapping, somebody was a wee bit too enthusiastic and fell off the stage and into the curtain. Oh, so actually fell off the side of it. Actually fell off the those little benches that we sat on yep. and fell into the curtain. Well, you know, you can never be too enthusiastic, you no. know. Over enthusiasm ends up lying on your backside, yeah, uh, so surrounded by black curtain. Very good. Um, funny, I there's another story about the clapping and where it came from. Yes, we. How did we forget about this? I well, I don't actually remember this. So that this is jog. Well, it hasn't jogged my memory. I still don't remember it. But tell us about the clapping. So during Pharaoh's song, we apparently during rehearsals came up with um, like a little hand clap. Isn't yeah, that what you call I it? I mean, yeah? it was it was it wasn't groundbreaking. No. by any means. <laughs> and apparently, the producers and the MD loved this so much that they were like, keep that in, and they loved it so much that they passed it around to the rest of the touring productions. So we were nationwide yeah. our hand clap was seen nationwide isn't that exciting yeah i do remember like going to the theater to meet the md mm-hmm. and that was always like a scary day yes. because obviously what we had been doing for months mm-hmm. and learning the harmonies and the songs and if we weren't good enough they were like no back to the click track we'll mm-hmm. just use the click track so that's when that happened then, yep. was it? We just yep. randomly did our random hand clap when it came to that song and they yep. liked it so much they kept it in. That's it. I, may, well, I hope we got a, like... Um, a mention? Yeah, programme credit for that. Choreography oh, credit? No, oh, probably didn't. not. Probably oh, didn't. Anything yeah, else from Joseph? We don't have enough money to take the, the production company to court, so we won't say <laughs> any more about that. <laughs> oh, 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 that would be... Don't. That would be... Oh, <laughs> honey. Oh. oh. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I mean, we have all interruptions on this podcast. We've had Siri in one episode. We've now had Honey the Dog in another. Sorry about that, folks. <laughs> we're back into business. What were, what were we talking about before Honey so rudely interrupted us? Joseph. Yeah, Joseph. Yes, I was about to say, my brother gave me a brilliant funny story for oh, Joseph. Tell. So, let me set the scene. Oh. Joseph. On his own. Well, we're in the background too because we never left those (laughs) steps. Ever. Ever. (laughs) Um, uh, Lights are down on him. Um, And it's close every door, I think, is the number. So he's in the jail. He's been thrown into jail. It's really quiet. You could hear a pin drop and he's singing. Uh, Close every door. And one of the lines is, Just give me a number. And one day... Good old Northern Irish school matinee audiences decided to respond to Joseph. So he sings, just give me a number. And some wee brat out of nowhere shouts, seven! (laughs) (laughs) Now, can you imagine what we were like when that happened? I totally forgot all about this until Adam said to me. So we spent the rest of close every door where let's be honest not much else is going on on stage it's somber it's somber it's just joseph and us well our shoulders were jiggling up and down because we couldn't control i think there were snorts and everything we were trying to hold in our laughs so there you go just give me a number seven Love it. i thought that was a brilliant brilliant memory and i totally forgot about it as well do you have any others for joseph no that's all joseph i have a few i have a few from when uh, we did Joseph oh, so okay, um, yeah. way way back the same company that kind of did the likes of Godspell mm-hmm. and some of the other shows that we were doing so we had um, we had a gay camel the Israelites rode a gay, gay camel who what? took yeah, so it's I think um, that song is it jo- uh, that bit but just before he sold to Potiphar mm-hmm. 
Joseph was taken to Egypt in chains and sold. Yep. Um, so on came uh, the Ishmaelites with a gay camel who had oh, was that lovely... Was before that? When the, Joseph, or when the brothers are coming up with the... They're selling Joseph. Yes. Okay, yeah, to back. the Ishmaelites. Yes. And the Ishmaelite rode a gay yes. camel who took a sign to Joseph. Oh. Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah. The funny wee, you know, very funny director, <laughs> clearly putting in. Uh, we also had one night that... The stage hand, stage hands are a, a breed of their own, aren't they? We need oh. to almost do an episode talking about stage hands yeah. someday. Stage hands are those folk who like work backstage, whom no production could do without. No. To be honest with you, because no. they, they they are the hard, hardest working mm-hmm. folk when it comes to production week. But there's I have some funny stage hand stories. I've got. One night the stage hand was a wee bit too heavy handed when it came to the smoke machine and the dry ice machine. Oh. Yeah, so in our production, uh, Pharaoh, who was basically a Vegas Elvis, which has happened quite yeah. a lot in lots of different versions, uh, but he came from inside a pyramid. Ooh, so fancy. there was, yeah, I know, right? So the the door of the pyramid went down mm-hmm. and it, like formed a ramp. Oh, okay. And obviously inside the pyramid, there was lots of dry ice. And there was also Elvis stroke mm-hmm. Pharaoh, who yeah. then would make his entrance. But this one night, the stagehand decided to press the button too many times. And there was too much dry ice and smoke, which meant that... The pharaoh actually couldn't see the ramp, oh, no. see the rope, oh, no. um, see anything, really. So all you started hearing was the pharaoh starting <laughs> to sing his, his number, but there was no sign of Mr. Pharaoh Man because he was still in the pyramid because he couldn't see out. Oh, dear. <laughs> yeah, I thought that was quite a funny story. We also had a stagehand um who came on to take the, the Joseph's coat off Joseph. Okay. But she was just a bit keen and she took it off Joseph in full light. So oh. she was just so keen to get on that in she rocks and the lights are still up. No such thing as a blackout with that stage hand. I think secretly she was looking for, we, you know... That two, was her 15 two, minutes yeah, of fame. <laughs> well, two seconds of fame, <laughs> like, for all the time it took to take the coat off him. But, yeah, so there you go. There are some um, daft um, Joseph stories, as if we didn't have enough. No. I love it. I love it. Um, like I said, we've had a few stories where people have got words wrong. Yeah. Um, and But, again, they are so funny that we will have, have a whole episode, I think, dedicated to words wrong and what we thought words were you know misheard yeah. lyrics and yeah a few a few naughty words as yes. well so we have to be very careful about what what yes. words we say yes. yeah indeed indeed we um there's nothing worse than that though when you're on stage <laughs> and you you trip up on your lines or you say the wrong lines or like it's one of those moments where every organ in your body just feels like it's like dropping yeah I, yeah, not good. Oh, it's happened a few times to me. Don't worry. Like oh, it. many's the time. Like I it. think in my in our next episode, I might have one of those oh, that happened to really? me. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh we look forward to that. Look well, to that. <laughs> indeed. <laughs> um, so when we did um, Godspell, we mentioned the costumes, and yeah. I have a story from our lovely friend Richard. Okay. Um, about how um, we spoke about how we homemade the costumes. Yeah, so they were. They, everyone did their made own. Them. Well, uh, Richard was helping his mum make his costume Mm -hmm. and it was all like raggedy edges on his trousers. They were sort of like cut and they needed to um, have a little bit of nail polish sort of put on the edges of the costume. So they didn't fray or something? Okay. But Richard said that he was unaware that nail polish would have made him feel a little bit funny. So he was sitting in a room making the costume and getting rid of those edges and his mum came in apparently he was as high as a kite. (laughs) <laughs> Almost singing all the songs and everything. Love, so Richard got high yeah, from making his God spell <laughs> costume. <laughs> wow. Okay. Isn't that brilliant? Yeah. Um, and Richard has some great stories. Like, you know. Richard's just one of those people that will always find himself in a situation where something funny yeah. 
or unexpected will always happen. Absolutely. Yeah. Like the time we were doing Blood Brothers. Yeah. And I'm not sure if you remember, uh, there was a rehearsal and he, it was the first time he was doing the judge's voice. He yeah. had loads of little bit parts. Yeah. And he was doing the judge's voice, which was this, he had just come up with this like funny voice to do and everybody laughed so much and he laughed. He put his hand up to his face and he was wearing braces at the time and his cardigan <laughs> got stuck. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like Richard. He, so there's that. I remember him in Blood Brothers actually and as you say he played multiple parts. Didn't he play like the the telly boy? Like the, the mum's. Mr. Johnston, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, he was fantastic was at, so at all those wee mini parts. So good. Brilliant. And then there was another time he did Peter Pan. Yeah. And he was Hook. I was his, I was Smee to his yeah. Hook. Yeah. And I was Tiger Lily. Oh, yeah. And um, the, there was a scene where I think it was just Smee, Hook, Peter Pan and Tinkerbell. And um, his Hook fell off his hand. Yeah. And tumbled down the stage and down the steps oh. and Tinkerbell our wonderful Tinkerbell just kicked it off the stage <laughs> lovely <laughs> so Hook was hookless for the rest of the the panto or the show yeah, yeah that was great. It. very that was good. good that was good yeah there's a few funny like stories of things like rolling off the stage and into the pit I remember we did a production of Crazy for You and mm-hmm. there's a there's a number in it called Slap That Bass mm-hmm. Um, and it's kind of about like the double bass is the cat. It's a bit of a jazzy number and like double bass is the perfect instrument for jazz, isn't it? So we all like the girls were the double bass and the boys played the double basses. And we did that by like having like a, a bit of car, not cardboard, but like what, like plywood or mm-hmm. something with like rope attached. Class. Um, And we had to like pluck the rope to show it was the strings of the double bass as we were tilting the girls to the side and there was um my dad was telling me there was one night that clearly too much mm-hmm. um too much gusto or back to the hand <laughs> clapping too much energy and the person was plucking the ropes so hard that the it sprung off um the girl and landed into one of the musicians in the pit oh no yeah and oh, then no. there, and there was there was then there was just a girl who, and a boy <laughs> who had nothing to like there was nothing to play like it was a bit awkward yeah oh love it love it we have a friend who we were I think it was a summer pantomime actually it could be wrong um and they were dancing and their petticoat fell off but mm. the professional that our friend shout out to Jillian is the petticoat came off and she just stepped out of it. And just kicked it and carried on. Did. Carried on. Um, of course she did. Such and I a had pro. one time in the opera house walking down the stairs and the heel of my tap shoe fell off. And oh. I couldn't go on and do the number. Raging. Yeah, I was raging. There's nothing worse when you're doing a tap show and... Le- um, not as bad as a heel coming mm-hmm. off, but like a screw coming out, oh. and then your taps just spinning round is yep. like uh, any chance. Yep. So <laughs> Especially sure. if it's a tap show. Yeah. yeah. I remember. I think I was Forty Second Street. I did, and I was like talk about superstitious and like worried something was going to go wrong. Mm-hmm. Like the number of times I I, I checked my tap uh, shoes because okay. I was like, if this like if a tap comes off, like I'm snookered for the rest of the show. Yeah, it's funny. Well, talking about superstitions, then we got some people um, messaged in to say that they, um, whenever they would have done the pantomimes, would have done little traditions. Yeah. Sort of walking down the stage and maybe would have had to have like touched certain, like the, um, I think it was the, the top of the stairs and then the sink and then just different, different Such things. Such stupid random things though, like touching a sink or a, a wall yeah. <laughs> it's going to make any difference says the the guy who <laughs> still sees magpies and freaks out yeah, yeah no um and my daughter has like a little um oh thing that she does and she actually took it from high school musical which i love yeah it's so she's show. taken it from high school musical and then she does this before she goes on stage um and it's i'm gonna get it wrong and it is kind of a visual thing but she i think is it sharpay does it and she goes like brr, brr, and then like ma, ma, yeah something like, ma, something like that and then gets herself ready for and that composes works does herself. It? she says okay it, oh, it helps her days maybe i should try that <laughs> on a daily basis just in the mirror when i get up in the morning ma, ma, brr, brr. Love it. Yeah, very Love good. It. Um, I've got a funny one of uh, a sh- an Oliver mishap. Oh. So the classic that is Oliver. Um, at the end of Oliver, 
uh, Bill Sykes gets shot, doesn't he, on London Bridge? I think. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he does. By the, the policeman mm-hmm. shoots him, and then he goes over mm-hmm. over the bridge into the river below. Um, I suppose it links quite well to your dad's story about Blood Brothers. Oh, okay. So this night in Oliver, the gun didn't go off. Mm. So the guy who was playing the <laughs> the police officer just walked himself up to the bridge and pushed Bill Sykes <laughs> over. <laughs> I think at the same time as as the drum drummer in the uh, band being it. told to do like a snare, like a a rim shot on on a snare drum, it was all a wee bit of a mess that night. But yeah, no, the policeman just took it upon himself to go up and push him over anyway. Well, that's one way of getting rid of Bill Sykes. <laughs> exactly. There was no splash though. <laughs> yeah, that's I brilliant. thought that was funny. Yeah. That's brilliant. Oh, I love it. I have one. Apparently, um, my mum was doing a a tap dance and it was Top Hat and Tails number. Mm -hmm. It was like stepping out. And it was in, like I said, in a dance trip. And uh, we would have done them in nursing homes. And she was performing it. And again, this would have been in a very small area. Yeah. And the uh, silver sparkly material on top of the Top Hat started yeah. to come off oh. and like sort of was in her eye line. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then also with the, the sticks or the canes, yeah. um, every time they were sort of doing a, a move that way, it was as if they were attacking the old people. <laughs> oh, sh- right. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dancing with props is always a wee bit yeah. worrying and a bit dangerous at times, isn't it? Definitely. Yeah. Is. Definitely Very good. Is. I've got... Um, uh, when we did Anything Goes, mm-hmm. our Moonface Martin, who was one of the two gangsters, mm-hmm. he made his first entrance out of like a trunk. That's right. Until the night he got stuck in the trunk and couldn't get out of the trunk. I do not remember. <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, it was it wasn't an overly. Let's just say the size of the trunk wasn't too different from the su- the size of Moonface Martin. Do you know what I mean? So there was always the potential there, I suppose. Yeah, but you never think these things are going to happen until they happen. No. Do you know what I mean? No. Like, but yeah, funny. And then guys and dolls, um, stage stage hand again. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, we've had very keen stage hands clearly. Um, Guys and Dolls was a bit of a nightmare because it jumped from scene to mm-hmm. scene to scene, didn't it? It like never is in one place for too long mm-hmm. a time. And also the hall we were we were working in, you know, we're performing in wasn't great for backstage access, was yeah, it? Very small. In f- very small. In fact, probably only you only really had wing space. That's the area at the side of the stage, not seen by the audience. On the the left hand side, I think stage right. Basically, you came off stage and you, you right were straight into a brick wall, weren't yeah. you? So a lot of things had to come on and come off on One the left hand side. Yeah, which meant we had to be quite clever with how we could change the scene to somewhere completely different with minimal amount of set. So one of the backstage guys came up with this great idea of when we were moving to the hot box which was Adelaide's nightclub kind of um scene just hanging like you know those like shimmer curtains you can get oh yeah yeah so it became the phantom shimmer curtains because the the guy one of the stage hands was basically given this job, like you have to hang the shimmer curtain, and you were back in, back in, in and out of the hot box a couple of times within the show, weren't, yeah. aren't you? Um, but because he had been given this, and he, you know, he, I think he secretly enjoyed that okay, role. Yeah, I think that's all he really thought about. Do you know what I mean? Okay. So, and I think he thought maybe it was, you know, the next scene was into the hot box for most scenes in the show. So the the shimmer curtains like floated on and then quickly off stage numerous times because every time we went to change the scene, he thought it was going into the hot box. He was there ready to go because I think he was also told it's a really quick change. You've got to be ready to go. Okay. Get on. Hang the curtains. So he had a mission. Get off. He was on a mission. <laughs> just misplaced the mission <laughs> several times throughout the show. So it, 
apparently it was very, I don't remember this, but I think I was, and also I don't remember it because I forgot I was in it as well as choreographing it. And I didn't know that until you posted a picture. I know. So apparently it was like phantom shimmer cloths. They were on and off more times than they were supposed to be on stage because he just kept coming on at the wrong time. So I think the audience were a bit confused dazzled by the <laughs> dazzled shimmer cloths. By the yeah. Cloths. So. Well, speaking of not remembering yeah. about doing something, on our Blood Brothers episode, you asked me, did I do it in school? And I was like, no, I didn't. <laughs> Apparently I did. <laughs> See, I was almost sure because I was thinking, what a dream. Like, you know, if you, you had done it yeah. outside of school, like what, a, maybe that's why I don't remember because it was just like... Yeah. Maybe that's what maybe that's what it was. Yeah. Or maybe just my memory is that bad. I my memory is shocking. Like the number of things that have come up in these podcasts yeah. that have jogged my memory. Or the number of things that have come up that I s that I haven't yeah. recalled. I'm going, Really? I is know, that right? It's so like funny, Are isn't you it? sure? Yeah. It's lovely that other people can tell us stories. Yeah. <laughs> I know, well that's but, true, yeah. Yeah. No, no, really. Yeah. There's loads of stuff I just I just didn't remember. Just, yeah. Hadn't hadn't remembered that I had done it in school. That's it. Actually performed it. Yeah. For um, the did GCSE. You, did you perform the same? Were you Linda? Yeah, I was Linda. Yeah. Oh my goodness. And you don't remember that don't at remember all. Don't remember it at all. That's really funny. I know. Hilarious. But I mean, there's a lot of stuff that people have probably pointed out in the podcast. I get words wrong. I talk a wee bit oh, too yeah, much. Yeah. I Full mean. disclosure. <laughs> so like the number of like texts I get from different people going... Just so you know, there isn't actually a, a number called the oldest establishment in Guys and Dolls. Yeah, I know. I'm really sorry. It's called the oldest established. All right. I added a, what's that, yeah. suffix? And I think I was calling, <laughs> or we were both calling in Joseph, like Canaan Days. And was it Canaan Nights or something? No, what no were you we were calling the Canaan Nights called... and it's Canaan Days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, guys, you are still with us. Like... And the Tower of Babel last yeah. week is actually the Tower of Babel. <laughs> who who knew? <laughs> but but well, you know you know what we're like. Listen, we're not. Do you know what? We're not the... here to show off. Exactly. So. <laughs> we are us. We are just <laughs> take, take us Wrong as we can. and proud. <laughs> In saying that, I have brought the word beseeched back. Well, have you? My father has. Like, Brilliant. love him. He has used it in a number of conversations. I, it was a, it was a um, text opener mm-hmm. uh, from somebody. He, he started the text with beseech. Love it. Um, the same person also sent me a five minute video of um, the difference between Sheep and goats. I know, not even one Godspell song. <laughs> not one Godspell song. In, <laughs> what is this? In the video, but plenty of ban and even more ban. <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, I love it. There you go. I think maybe that's enough funny stories for one week. Oh, but you know what? I'm sure it's... we'll get some more. And Fans are great, aren't yeah. they? Yeah. Like, we have fans, Timothy. We have fans. Are, are the fans or are they just feeling sorry for us and listening, Lauren? <laughs> maybe, like... that's maybe that's it. Maybe that's it. But musical theatre, suppose, wouldn't really work without fans. Like, yeah, it also wouldn't work without funny stories. I think that's part of being involved in it, isn't mm-hmm. it? Like, And even, like, I think of people who do it for a career in the same show, mm-hmm. like, eight times a week, like, for a year. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Funny things have to happen to keep it fresh and to keep it funny and yeah. enjoyable, I'm sure. Yeah. No, I love it, love it. But yeah, keep keep sharing, keep sharing. But... We're just a crazy bunch of guys and all this armor. Love it. Well, do you know a recent musical which was really, uh, the fans really got behind it? Can you think of a, a musical within the last five years that fans really got behind? Mm, I mean, it could be... I think fans for uh, for musicals these days, uh, a lot of musicals almost get like cult st- status mm, now, yeah. in that the fans really, really are behind it, and mm-hmm. like they come dressed up, they have like special events, to, yeah. so it could be one of many, many. Mm-hmm. Which one are we talking about? I'm talking about Beetlejuice. Oh, okay. Okay. Right. So, Beatles... Honey's making a, hit, made an appearance. I know, I know. So, if you hear a dog singing, <laughs> it's just Honey, okay? <laughs> so, yes, Beatles. Do you know much about Beatles? Yes. Okay. So, full disclosure 
fan, some fans out there might be absolutely disgusted with what I'm about to say. I have zero knowledge of anything Beetlejuicy other than I have listened to the soundtrack mm-hmm. of the musical, which is fantastic. But Lauren, I have, haven't even watched the film okay. Beetlejuice yeah. ever. So okay. there you so, go. Well, let's start with that. So Beetlejuice isn't an original source material as in it was a film in the 80s and it had like a it's a Tim Burton movie okay so Tim Burton tends to have a cult following yeah now I but Beetlejuice is not something that I ever watched whenever I was younger and I only watched it probably within maybe the last three years with the kids and they they do like it and I say it's okay is it not really scary for kids no I thought it was scary and I try to stay away from scary movies so that's probably why I never watched it whenever I was younger no not really okay Oh, Not I have really. it up right up there with Chucky in my head. Oh, gosh, like I'm going, no. No. oh, Beetlejuice is as scary as that. Unless I fell asleep halfway through it. No, <laughs> no, I don't, I don't think so. So we'll talk about the musical. So mm. we know it's it was a film first, but Beetlejuice, it's a musical um, with music and lyrics by Eddie um, Perfect and book by Scott Brown and Anthony King. So it is based on the 1988 film, which is about, about a deceased couple who try to haunt the new family of their home and call from help from a bio exorcist ghost called beetle juice but it's not spelled beetle juice it's beetle juice okay um <laughs> you're really selling yeah, it to really me here Lauren. <laughs> so lydia is the young girl who lives in the home with her dad and her um stepmom now and she is dealing with her mum's death um and she can see the ghosts and it's really just the story around that okay so the musical is obviously takes um the same sort of story as the film, but um, it's slightly different. Okay. So Beetle just began in 2019 um, to just like an okay audience. And it was in the beautiful Winter Garden. Have you ever seen anything in the Winter Garden in the Broadway? Do you know it's been so long since I've been to Broadway? Ugh, I, can't even, I don't even know where that theatre, like what? It's, it what would be a famous theatre in Broadway. So yeah. you maybe know it Pro- now. Maybe, yeah. Because... Um, and I'll explain why you probably have heard yeah. of it. So, do the beautiful um, Winter Garden in Broadway. But it opened to, as I said, okay audiences. And because the sales weren't great, yeah. there's a clause almost that producers can have whenever a show opens that if you don't meet your sales, they can start looking for another show to come in and, and take uh, over. okay. So, this is what happened. Oh, no. And they found Music Man. <gasps> Okay, yes. Is okay. this the music man that had Which my lovely um, Sutton Foster? And... Sutton Foster. Yeah. Okay. okay. So let's think back. It was 2019. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, this yeah, is yeah. pre-COVID. Pre-COVID, Okay. Yeah. Um, so they were, sorry, they were basically going to kick Beetlejuice out, out of the theatre and bring in music, music man. man. Okay. okay. Then a little thing called social media happened. Right. And fans were going to Beetlejuice and Beetlejuice was becoming really popular on TikTok. What? Yes. Like, what, like like we snippets of we the snippets musical of the on music. TikTok? That's ah, it. Okay. Behind the scenes, everything like that. But these people weren't coming to the theatre to see the show. Both. It was a bit of, it was a bit of both. Oh, okay. It was just, it had a bit of a slump and then TikTok sort of people yeah. were doing bits. And then it also, a Tony's performance. Oh, right. Okay. See, the power of the Tony's. That's it. Tony, 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 Tony. 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 For those so, musical fans out there, what's that a reference to? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, the Tony's performance, then people were like, oh, what is this? Like, okay. Okay. And then yeah. it became popular. But at that point, the deal had already been done with okay. Music Man. Yeah. Um, but actually, <laughs> both of this, the TikTok and the Tony's performance, led to a surge in sales, so much so that it actually broke a box office. Box record. office. Box wow. office. Yeah. Um, before a close, before so, COVID kind of hit. Yeah, before oh, okay. COVID kind of hit. So that was that, and then COVID hit, and mm-hmm. it was it had to close anyway. anyway it yeah. was about to close. It was going to have to close. They were sort of looking for a new venue. Whenever obviously theatre got back up and running full spec, it's yeah. a really big show. Beetle just like the set, the staging, it's yeah. massive, so it can't just go to any other theatre. Yeah, it's quite a good soundtrack in that you can kind of get a. a a good grasp Mm -hmm. of what might be going on on stage and there's there's certain parts of it that you're going 
oh, like that needs a bit of a bit of magic yes. or that th- this part needs to be huge yes. to get a reaction from the audience. And I'm going, that's expensive to do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So it did come back. Yeah. But unfortunately, the sales again weren't weren't great. Mm. Um, so it just closed there a couple of months ago. Okay. So, so I suppose it, it would remind me of a musical that, you know, when you know, an audience member went to see it, a lot of those audience members would want to come back. That's it. To see it. That's it. So it opened again 2022, closed then, but it's on tour in America. Yeah. So it's it's one of those, um, it will be about, I would say it'll, it'll yeah. be about, but it's also, we'll probably go into it, it's very of its time. Some of the music, and I don't know if you got this in some of the lyrics, it talks about like Pottery Barn and like Dry White Wine. Yeah. It's very millennial. Okay. So I knew the film was 1988. Yeah. But they sort of updated it to be more millennial. And I, I don't know if that means it's going to last another 10, 15, 20 years. Yeah. So. Yeah. I, funny you, should, you say that about the music. Like, I remember listening to the opener number and thought, gee whiz, this is really clever. Because mm-hmm. the number of different genres of music yeah. that they got into that first opener number, like they had like almost like a like a heavy metal section yeah. and then they had like a country and westerny kind of, then they had a jazzy mm-hmm. like smoky blues clubby yeah. kind of bit and i thought this is really clever then they had almost like tango or cha 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 like i thought who who did the music perfect someone yeah. perfect yeah um, well he did a perfect job of it because i was like that's really clever eddie perfect yeah Very good. so it just shows you the power of the fans mm. and that cast album has streamed over uh, 1.6 million streams. Yeah. And those fans, as we mentioned before, what you mentioned, are called the Netherlings because of okay. the Netherworld. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, know? yeah. So, cool. Um, I think that's yeah. really, that's really cool how musicals now do that. Like, there's loads of mu- musicals where the fans have their own wee, like, nickname. Yeah. Like, Heathers has, like, their own fan base. I can't remember what they're called. Like, you've got the Hamilton mm-hmm. Hamilton fans are called something. I can't remember. I don't know any of these, their names. No, but, but everyone sort of has, yeah. like, their wee names, which is, which is pretty cool. That um, sometimes scares me, though, <laughs> when fans are so, like... Intense. Intense about like, their it's musical. it's worked for Rocky Horror Show. That's true. I suppose that's probably one of the first musicals that had that kind of yeah. cult fan following we go back mm-hmm. again and again and again and again with and dress up and all that the audience members for Beetlejuice do come dressed as Lydia or do mm-hmm, come dressed mm-hmm. as Beetlejuice you know and I think it's very specifically Lydia from the musical not Lydia from the film okay and are they very different not from what you very know very different but there's certainly if you if you know your musical yeah, compared to your, yeah. your film, yeah, you will notice some some little tweaks. I tell you what, that yeah. girl's voice that plays Lydia is the original. Yeah, the original. Yeah. Although there was controversy about her as well, yeah, wasn't she there? She just put up so just before, um, I think it was probably like the end of February, beginning of March of twenty twenty. She just put up a, a post on Instagram saying, "I quit." Just like that. And that's like that. so, like in theatre, that's so unheard of. Yeah. Like you do your contract, you yeah. see your contract out. And then if there's a cast change, there's a cast yeah. change. And a big thing is made of cast changes. But you don't just like no. go in the middle of a, a no. contract no. Un- no. unless you've hurt yourself or no. you're indisposed of something. And then she some deleted reason. it. Oh. But then her understudy. But she she is like a, a Broadway like original like she yeah. she started when she was really young and then she was she was in that film um the good good and evil was okay on yes like yeah, yeah, yeah. In and that's kind of why she went wasn't yeah. it she had just had enough of it and she was wanting to pursue like tv and yeah. film stuff yeah yeah to do that but yeah there was a wee bit of controversy Bra- yeah brave choice to kind of like drop them in it i know really i know and then cooper hit and the sh- show was yeah. closing anyway so yeah. it was it's one of those shows i really hope 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 gets like a London production. I would love to see that. I, I think, you know, the difficulty with it being on tour, as I said, is the theatres need to be big enough to host yeah, these things. Yeah. So I don't know whether or not it would be able to tour worldwide. No, but even like in the West End for a, mm-hmm. a, a period of yeah. time, like there's there's loads of Broadway shows that I'm like going, oh, I hope. Yeah. Like, for example, Newsies is one of them. Mm-hmm. Like, Newsies was in Broadway, like, so long ago. Yeah. And I was going, any chance mm-hmm. of it coming to London? Yeah. And it, it was a good, what, 
couple, like 10 years mm-hmm. and before and it's in London now and it's the story of like the newspaper boy striking and mm-hmm. and it, it's, it looks a Amazing, a bit like the immersive Guys and Dolls. Yeah. I really want to see it. Did you see Guys and Dolls is staying until twenty. I know, four? which Fair means work? I hopefully will see it at some point. See, I told you not to lose hope. I know, but now I will. Like I'm never happy, am I? I'm <laughs> so difficult to please. I now not only want to see it, but I want to see it with the original cast. Like I don't okay. want to see it before they do a cast change. Okay, well, but listen, beggars, beggars can't, can't be, be choosers. <laughs> Jinx, touch wood. <laughs> um, okay, so before we sort of get into musical era ling- lingos, I've got a little quiz for you. On Beetlejuice? Yeah. Are you joking me? No. You've got a quiz on Beetlejuice <laughs> for somebody who has not seen the <laughs> has not seen the film nor the musical and only listened to the soundtrack. Well, it's not actually a quiz on Beetlejuice, but it just happens to be. So within Beetlejuice... Hold on. What is it with this episode and you trying to surprise me and catch me <laughs> off guard? Ovaltine to start with and now a Beetlejuice quiz. Love it. Love it. Okay. So there's many references to other musicals. So oh, okay. So in the song, The Whole Being Dead Thing, which... The Whole Being Dead you Thing. Know, Beetlejuice... Yeah. Is all about death. I know, which, like, for the premise of a musical, I mean, it shouldn't work. Yeah. She'd be quite, like, sad and Mm -hmm. mournful, like Les Mis multiplied by 300. Yeah. I find Les Mis very depressing and sad. Well, but we'll it's not, that's the thing. Like, like, sorry, Beetlejuice isn't. No, like, you listen no. to the soundtrack and it's rocking. It's yeah. so good. It's great. Okay, here so, we go. So, there's many references to other musicals, Timothy. Can you name me what those references are? In the show? No, of no, course I can't. Can. Okay, I'll give you a really hard one. No, it's not. He says, like, Rogers, Hart and Hammerstein. Yeah, they're all composers, aren't Great. they? Great. Well done. You get a point. Yeah. Okay. If but... you give me the line, I should be able to get the reference. <laughs> no, no, no. So that, that isn't. But my quiz is based on that. Okay. So we know that Rogers, Hart and Hammerstein, that they are composers. Um, why would those names be together? Rogers, Hart and Hammerstein. Rogers, Hart, Hammerstein. Rogers. <laughs> Ooh, I hear <hate> tests. <laughs> this is the quiz. This is the test. Rogers, Hart, ha- Rogers and Hammerstein. Yay, they they, well they, done. they work together. Okay. So can you name me a Rogers and Hammerstein? Oklahoma it was a Rogers <laughs> and Hammerstein. My favorite. <laughs> okay. Another one. Other. Oh gosh, they have so many. King and I. Mm-hmm. Um, South Pacific was theirs, wasn't mm-hmm. that? You You're just want, good. yeah. You just want make um, uh, ca- not cabaret, uh, carousel, yeah, wasn't that? Well done. Um, it's seven. No, seven brides for seven brothers, yeah. isn't Rogers Hammerstein? Oh, so they did a Cinderella. Cinderella, great, well done. Um, and one more. One more. Yeah, Can you give more. me the beginning letter? S. S. Well, the... Sound of music. Yeah, well done. Yeah. Well done. Okay. Okay, so Rogers, Hart and Hammerstein. So Rogers worked with Hart. He also worked with Hammerstein. Okay. And then he also did stuff by himself. So yeah. that's why it's together, Rogers, Hart and Hammerstein. Yeah. So what about Rogers and Hart? Can you name a musical that they did together? Rogers and Hart. They didn't do Chicago, did they? No. no. It's This is hard. I'm not sure if you're going to get it. No. As wonderful as you are. Babes in Arms. Nah, we'd never got it. I've heard of it, but yeah. never listened to it. And then Rogers actually worked with Sondheim. Mm-hmm. Um, and a musical that he did by himself was the wonderful Danny Keane's 2 by 2 And do you know what 2 by 2 is about? No, I've never even heard of that. No, uh, The Flood. Ah, yeah. two by two, they all went into yeah. the dark, two by yeah. two. Yeah. Oh, well, is is a ticket, there's a soundtrack for that, a yeah. cast recording. I will be listening to that because I haven't actually heard of that music. So. That's really weird that you have just brought up a musical that I've never heard of I before. Know. Like, I know most musicals, no. hence I'm doing this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> and then another but you got quiz. me there. Another quiz for you. What um, does... Beetlejuice and School of Rock have in common. Um, the lead actor who 
would have been my stand innovation. Mm-hmm. Um, Alex Brightman, isn't That's it? That's right, yeah. He, that guy is insanely talented. Yeah. Um, like, just to... You should all go and listen to the Beetlejuice um, cast recording just to be able to hold that gravelly, gruff voice from start to finish is insane. And then he was the original Dewey or Dewey mm-hmm. in uh, Andrew Lloyd Webber's version of School of Rock, the, music, right, yeah. the, the musical fact, version every, he wrote. Everybody that is has currently played Beetlejuice from, from Alex onwards has also played MG and Scott oh, Rock. it makes sense. It's yeah. a kind of say it's a rocky voice, yeah. isn't it? Because I was like, oh, I would love to play Dewey in School of Rock at yeah. some point, but I don't think I could do it because I don't. My voice just isn't rocky enough. Like he's he's a proper like rocky legend. Like he's wonderful. And do you know how he does that voice for no. Bill? Just. Um, I think if I've got this right, he did have some, you know, as singers, we would have some throat problems okay. or if you're doing it um, for a long period of time. And it, what he does to get that raspy sort mm-hmm, of mm-hmm. voice, um, it's called a ventricular fold. What? Yep. <laughs> and it allows him to create the sign- signature gruff voice um, bec- and it doesn't strain his vocal cords. He can actually, it's something with the back, he folds there. There's, if you search Alex Brightman yeah. and listen to loads of podcasts that he's he's on, he will explain it. And he says oh, it just wow. doesn't hurt him at all. He says it's actually much easier for him to sing and speak in that voice than it is his normal. That's amazing. Because mm. I also had thought, um, how does he keep that, putting that voice on, yeah. like up for like eight shows a, mm-hmm. a week? Because I was like... Surely he wrecks his voice by putting that gravel on, but that makes sense then yeah. that he doesn't wreck it because it actually is just a natural thing that he yeah. can do. Wow, yeah, he's a ama- like he oh, is amazing that. and he's funny, like his yeah. comic type. It, it's funnily written, mm-hmm. like it's really, really clever. And I love how in the, the opening, not like actually, throughout, you know, he he breaks that fourth wall and he yeah. just talks to yes. the audience and like he tells them to put their mobile phones away or he'll you know yeah you know he threatens it. them he and insults them like it's it's, it's really funny yeah. it's a re it's a re it sounds like a really good musical i just wish i could see it in person i yeah. think it would be amazing no yeah. it is it is a it is a really good musical and it is about death but it's like you, you've always said it it mentions it in a way that for me, I have a real issue with getting sick. I don't ever have a real issue with dying. Yeah, okay. So, um, oh, we're getting deep here, people. Yeah, but I drink your over time. <laughs> it'll be fine. But I can. I, there's certain things that I can't watch. Like Les Mis makes me feel mm. uncomfortable. There's other things which I watch and I, I don't feel good after it. Yeah. While yeah. I can listen to the soundtrack of. Um, Beetlejuice and I love it even with that song Dead Mum yeah um, which hits home to both of us really because actually the first time I heard that song I went it, it did make me go oh hold on yeah hold on a minute yeah yeah. and sometimes but you're right like I can listen to that song and it's it, 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 it's okay yeah, like, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, I, I think because yes the, the, the show opens with a ballad and she's at her mum's funeral that's right I also thought that was really brave choice mm-hmm. like what a way to open yeah. a musical at, at like a funeral yeah and, it, and it then he comes out and goes season. yeah okay okay guys this yeah. show's about death yeah. and like he just makes it like hilarious from start from and the, the very way start. that he mentions as well it goes um oh and a brave choice uh, you yeah. know for, like not so far from the source material yeah. you know <clears throat> excuse me and it's just lovely yeah. it's just you can go oh, okay and even the bit where if you listen to the cast recording it's going to say if you die this is still going to play. That's right. If you die when listening to this soundtrack, don't worry, it's still going to play. Yeah. I also love the, don't worry, I do this eight times a week. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's just really funny. Well, if you watch it on, or you maybe see some YouTube um, clips when he's performing it live or they're performing it live, they say, if you die in this theatre, we're still going to continue oh, on. Oh, so, there's so a it's few still little linked. Changes. Yeah, because yeah. I was like, oh, how is that just something they put in for yeah. the cast recording? No. Oh, that's cool. Um, so one of my musical lyrical lingos is about that whole being dead 
thing. Okay. And about the fact that in the song, the whole being dead thing, um, Sword of Democles, have you heard of that before? No. So it mentions the Sword of Democles is swinging. Okay. Um, which means that you, that what that means or that expression means is a sign of threat. Oh. Okay. So it's there's like a threatening, a warning, yeah, a fear, a waiting. Mm. So already we know the show is about death it's yeah. told us but also just having that line yeah. in that the, the title yeah. <laughs> you know is or sorry in the, the song which says the whole being dead thing you know that something's going to happen yeah okay yeah so sort of whenever we meet the couple next no. we know that something is going to happen so if you haven't seen the film which yeah. you haven't and i think the it the two different productions of it or something like how they meet their end that couple is different like i think in broadway do they like fall through the floor mm-hmm. or something yeah but then i think on the tour like the touring version of mm-hmm. the show they get electrocuted mm. i learned that in my research love that yeah love that. yes because it's clever suppose, isn't it of the, the yes those stage in wise which is very different to the film because they're um obviously they they are in the house and they die in mm. the broadway show and that's how they're able to stay there on and be sort of you know haunting yeah they die in a car in the oh, film dear. right okay so it doesn't make sense that they're back in, in the, the house. house yeah okay um but also it's very um i love that song like ready but not quite ready yes you know yeah, and yeah, i yeah. think that's a lovely way to not you know remember don't live your life that way because you just yeah. don't know what's around what's the corner going on? yeah live you know every day and they keep putting things off and then they mm. sort of have like a lovely character arc when they're ghosts and they realize no i'm not going to be that scared yeah. person anymore yeah i'm going to do things and i'm i'm going to try but they're they're you know it's touched on a lot more in the musical is that they probably struggle to have a family and mm-hmm. um, it's not it's really really hinted at the film and it's lovely that their uh, parenting comes uh, through to Lydia. Yeah. And I think it's a nice way for people to remember. You don't necessarily always have to be that person's parent to be yeah. a parent, you know, yeah, and that's yeah, yeah. nice. So. Yeah. Do you know what? I think I'm going to have to go and watch this film. This has happened to me a couple of times, like recently, where I've seen a musical version mm-hmm. that's based on a film and I've gone, oh, I actually need to go and watch that film. Yeah. It happened with Back to the Future. I went to see mm-hmm. Back to the Future, the musical. I think I've seen it four times now. It is brilliant. Oh, yeah. But my husband has a bone to pick with you. Why? What have I done? Back to the Future, one of his favourite films. Yeah. And he's asked you if one of his favourite songs was in it and you were like, no. Jeff, no, it's not in it. It's not in it. I was listening to the soundtrack. But did and I, I not went, go, oh, no, it is? No, you said, no, it's definitely oh, not in it. <laughs> um, and I've seen it four times. <laughs> um, no, but I saw the musical before I saw the film yeah. and all the, like, people like, look aghast when I say I've, I have never seen Back to the Future. Like, such an iconic film but yeah so i saw the musical and then went i need to go and watch this film so i did and then went back and watched the musical mm-hmm. several other times oh it's such and a great still show. don't remember the iconic songs <laughs> that are in it but sure yeah, so what good. can you do no yeah. what can you do um well do you have any sound innovations or anything you, yeah just alex brightman like mm-hmm. i think he and that girl's voice although she let herself down a wee bit when she broke her con- contract early um <laughs> But yeah, no, that guy, Alex Brightman, go and listen to him on the School of Rock soundtrack as mm-hmm. well. He's so brilliant, like. He is great. He's a bit, I want to be like him. Yeah, no, he's class. He really is. But I think that that character is great. Yeah. Is great. Yeah, two really well-written, f- funny. Mm-hmm. There you go. The funny characters again. Like, mm-hmm. I'm just drawn to a funny man. Yeah, indeed. What well, can I say? Yeah, what about indeed. you? What are your standing ovations? Yeah, I, there's a load of different like bit parts mm. in um, Beetlejuice, and I think that there's that um, song where, where she uh, I've forgotten the girl's name where she talks about um, you know don't don't put things off you know and her husband running off to with mm. somebody else and then you know Lydia's like are we still talking about me you know that yeah. wee bit part and a couple of other things so there's the the um girl selling the scout cookies oh that I was a that just came up in my head I was like oh I must mention the girl scout because it's hilarious yes, so she's know. selling the cookies and their be- Beetlejuice and Lydia are basically trying to scare anybody yeah. that comes to the house mm-hmm. and it's so and the we um girl guide like has a heart condition yeah, doesn't right. she where yeah. she could like if she gets scared she could yeah. drop dead at any yeah. point 
and they're just scaring the life out of her. Yeah, that's right. Here, I actually do have a musical lyrical lingo, which oh, I am only remembering now. I didn't realise that Deo, mm. is that is is it in the film? Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. So I just thought that was... Oh. So... That was our one of our like dance trip um, specialties, the Caribbean That's routine, right. yeah. and we put that in, didn't we? We did. Uh, I didn't realise that. Do like come um, man, we want yeah, go home. home was actually that, yeah. from Beatles. Yeah. Never knew it. Yeah. Until I listened to the soundtrack, went, hold on a minute, that's mm-hmm. in our Caribbean. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, go. I love, I love it. And like I said, it does mention death. So if I know some people are very funny about death, so. But listen yeah. to it with the fact that it is a comedy. It's very funny. Um, I don't think you could listen to it and be offended. I, no. I think it's just so funny and yeah. so like the the one liners are even in yeah. song are really where they like. Because I do, as I mentioned before, I do sometimes find myself going about the house going, "Dead mom, mm. dead mom," <laughs> and it's really ironic. Mm. <laughs> It's just really catchy. It's a great song. Oh, I tell is. you what, if there's anyone out there that's auditioning for stage skills, I would say if you can sing it and sing mm. it well, it's a knockout audition song, isn't mm-hmm. it? Imagine hearing that in an audition yeah. room, you'd be like, whoa. And also the last song she sings, like Hoban. Yeah, it's beautiful. It's a beautiful song. And I love that, you know, not, and we're not giving anything away. Love that the mum doesn't become, you know, a character. Doesn't yeah. like come down as a ghost or anything. <laughs> like, like uh. Billy's mum and Billy Elliot. Oh gosh, it's the one part of that show I'm like, oh really? But it also does like pull the heartstrings. Like when yeah. Billy's mum comes on during that let. It's song, not real life. Letter, talk like. I know, I know, but it's musical <laughs> theatre. Like make believe, Lauren. Like Jesus. I know, but that's what I suppose. That's what I maybe can relate to Beatle just more. Is that. You know, she's a teenager and, like, we weren't teenagers whenever that yeah. happened to us. But, um, you know, she and it's it's a journey that you can take with other people. But it, grief is a journey that you take by yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you ask all those questions. Mm. And, you know, I know you're in the ground, but I feel you all around. Yeah. You know, all of those things. Um, But you can kind of see her grief journey through yeah, yeah. the songs and that realisation that, okay, where you are is where you need to be, but I don't need to be there yet, you yeah, know, yeah, and yeah. I'm going to go back and yeah. I'm going to be okay and I'm going to, you know, and I suppose it's about that healing relationship with it's her like dad. It's like a self-help guide, isn't it, for yeah. anybody who finds himself we in find that situation. We find a ghost yeah. and yeah. a wee, uh, demon. Yeah. No, don't do that, but you no. know what I mean. <laughs> no, don't be doing that, no. <laughs> that was a bit of a different, like, musical lyrical lingo episode today. Yeah. It's the first musical thing we've talked about where neither of us have... Like a personal, yeah, connection. you know, connection to it. We haven't done it, although I it is in, on my list now. It is my mission to play Beetlejuice at some point. I just Ooh. need to work on that gravelly voice. <laughs> I would wreck myself having to do that for a week. Yeah, I so, love but I love it. it still teaches us new exactly. things, doesn't it? And that's, that's what it. this um, podcast is all about. It is indeed. So, on to next week. Uh, normal... Um, what is it? Normal operation resumes? Yeah, Normal that's right. is that right? Is that I'll do. I'll do. Uh I've got a clue. Have you got a clue? You go for your clue. Have you you probably have a better clue. No. Although you don't have African sunset hair like I do, so it might work <laughs> a bit better. So I'm gonna get uh my a little curly perm done up. Oh. For my African sunset hair for next week's episode. Like that is a really roundabout way. I know, but I was like, what? Like, what clue do you give <laughs> without like giving it away? I think our clues are too obvious. I'm just gonna say okay. it. Okay. Okay. I think people have now gone past the stage of making guesses. Daft. Yeah. Ridiculous. Yeah. They're just going guesses. They're. I think we've been too kind over the last couple of episodes and given really clear. I'm a little scared. <laughs> really clear ones. So I'm getting my African sunset hair permed for next week's episode. I, I really hope that you I have I can't wait a to hear the guesses. I can't wait to hear what people say about this. African sunset perm. Yeah. Love it. Love yeah. it. Well, thank you for joining us on this lovely journey. I know. It's been... It's been swell and the oval team is not, it's gone. It's empty. See? It was really nice. I think it might have to become like a... A, a staple in your yeah. kitchen cupboard. 
No, I mean for like the podcast. Like oh, I, right. I don't think I can do it at any, any more of these podcasts without a, oh, a, a mug goodness. of bubble tea in my hand. Demands. Yeah, get it on my rider. <laughs> Until next week, folks. Bye. Bye.